the Premier League champion is going to be of the 23-24 season. Is it Arsenal? Is it Man City? This is going to surprise a lot of people. This is the big one. Our Premier League predictions for the 23-24 season. We're going from 20th place to first, but my 20th place is no. FPL League is now out and there's some massive prizes. If you've got the ball knowledge to finish first place, we're giving away tickets to the future year. We're giving away some new shirts that we haven't given away yet. And Thog Dad, what else can you do? Well, I'll tell you what, let's have 20,000 likes because if you do that, it's going to bring your team luck this season. Really? Theo. What, next year? You do yeah. well if you hit the like button. It's as simple as that. Who is the worst team in the league? Sheffield United, oh. I'm afraid. They were runners-up in the championship last season. But you know what? They haven't bought yet, Theo. They've sold and died 17 yes. million euros to Olympic Marseille. That, for me, is a bad signal. Losing Illimin and Dai is losing their gem of the team. And for 18 million euros, I'm very worried what they're going to do with that reinvestment. With Without him, I'm not too sure. The only two players with value in that squad now is Anel, the centre-back, and the midfielder of Sander Burge. They need to reinvest in goals. I don't know which striker is going to do it. Brewster, for me, he isn't going to cook. Oli McBurney, he was all right the last time he came to the Prem, but you can't rely on him. Is the Derby County 0708 points record at risk? I don't think it is. It's not going to be that bad. It just shows terrible, terrible lack of ambition to sell your best player. In 19th place, the second team to get relegated for me, it is Luton Town, Theo. Now they've got the Ooh. cheapest squad in the league. They, they came up in third position. They spent about 17 million euros on four players. The likes of Marvellous Nakamba, you've heard of him. They might surprise like Forrest did, but I don't think they will. Yeah, I'm excited about the new fullback signing duo, the most expensive players at the club via market value, and that's Ryan Giles and Issa Kabor. Issa Kabor spent a year at Marseille last year. He was decent. If they are going to go for a five-back tactic and play them as the wing-backs, they may be able to create for Carlton Morris, who got something like 26 contributions last year. So I'm excited to see how he can do it in his future years. How do you think Colton Morris will do? He can do all right, Theo. And Adi Bayo is someone I saw. He didn't have a brilliant season last season, but the season before, I think he bagged a lot of goals. Have they invested well enough to survive? The answer for me and you is no. The answer for me is we don't know yet, but when you only spend 17 million on four or five players, you're not competing with the likes of your Villas and your Bournemouths even. Yeah, 19th place for me. I'm really sorry, Luton. If anything's gonna keep you up though, it's that home form. It's gonna be a difficult place to go. People won't be able to recognize it. I'm excited for some iconic fixtures. Make Kenilworth Road a fortress. Dad, who is your final relegated club from the Premier League next season? Well, I'm sorry to do this, Theo, but it's Everton Football Club. Are you serious? Who, yes, who were 17th last season. Now the bookies think they're gonna stay up. But they haven't invested. In fact, they've sold Moise Keane, they've sold Ellis Sim. There's too much pressure on players like DCL. Hold on, you're telling me they're going to get relegated moving into their new stadium? And that's part of the problem, Theo. You move to a new stadium, it doesn't always work because it's not a fortress from day one. They've been doing the same thing every season, the same tired squad, and they're expecting something different to happen. And it won't. This is going to be a struggle. Now, I think it's going to be very tight at the bottom. There's six or seven teams mm. who are going to be in a race, a relegation fight, all season. I'm relegated. Wolverhampton Wanderers and I'm very worried about them last year they only picked up 11 points away from home they only scored about what 30 ish goals one of the lowest scoring teams in the Premier League they didn't have a goal scorer what's the answer to that problem well they've signed Matthias Cunha on a permanent for nearly 50 million euros and look at the players that they've lost Ruben Neves to Saudi Jean moutinho has gone now Connor Cody to the championship Raul Jimenez has gone to Fulham the squad is thinning and you're not replacing I'm not gonna roast you Theo I mean Cunha what 50 50 million euros, that's that not is worth astonishing. It. I, I, I watched him at Hertha Berlin. I thought he wasn't good enough for the Bundesliga. You bring him to the Premier League, expect him to be prolific. Not for me. Dad, who is the one club to survive by the nick of their teeth? In 17th place, it's Burnley or oh. oh. Lancashire <laughs> Theo, who absolutely smashed the championship last year. They've got a great manager in Vincent Company, and they've spent about 66 million euros on four players, including Jordan Bayer, who's a centre-back Theo from the Bundesliga. I think he came from Munch and Gladbach. They signed James Trafford. I'm excited excited to see if he can even start in the Burnley team. But when you make almost a record transfer fee for a goalkeeper who's English and up and coming, Trafford needs to break into that team. Out of all the teams that have come up from the championship, Burnley have had the best transfer window. Zeki Amdouni, the Swiss-Turkish attacking midfielder, excites me. Jordan Bayer from the yeah. Bundesliga centre-back, 23 years old. I think Vincent Company has a big pull. He's someone that will potentially also pull it together. So I've also gone with Burnley for my 17th place. We agree. First of all, Theo, Turf Moor is a very difficult ground to go to. So you may 
take that at Fortress, you get a lot of points at home. You've got to look to win seven or eight home games, pick up a couple of wins on the road, and you stay up in this division. And as Zaruri on the left wing, I'm very excited to see how he can do the Moroccan. That's a shout out to all the Moroccans watching Burnley to survive in the Premier League. Thogden and Thogdad confirmed. And in 16th place, I've gone for AFC Bournemouth, Theo, Ooh. who were 15th last season, despite losing the last four games. Now, I'm a little bit worried about them. They conceded 71 goals last season. They don't really have a prolific goal scorer, but they have invested in the squad there. Are you worried about Gary O'Neill leaving? A lot of fans had a problem with that, did you? Yes, I do, Theo. I mean, the value of a good manager, we've seen it with Pep. We're going to yeah. see it with Vincent Cumming. The value of a good manager is incredible. Going to be close, right to the wire. I think they'll just stay up. In my 16th place, you've already mentioned them. It's Everton Football Club. Arnout Danuma is someone that, let's just go back to just a year ago when he was at Villarreal, smashing it all the way to the Champions League semi-final. And I think in about eight starts in the Champions League, he scored about six goals. That's the hardest competition in the world. If we see anything like that, he's going to smash it. Under Sean Dyche, a manager which I believe in, and also had a few beers with him out in uh, Portugal this yeah. summer. Really good guy. Josh, put the picture on the screen. I asked him, are you going to turn around Deli Ali's career? He said, let me cook. I can't confirm he actually said that, but after a few drinks, he believes he really can turn him round. Very brave for him to talk about what he's been through in a very difficult life. Yeah. From a human perspective, I would love Deli Ali to resurrect his life and his career. In 15th place, I've gone for Wolverhampton Wanderers, but I am worried, Theo. You've talked about all the players who've left at the uh -huh. exit door. They brought in Cunha. Cunha was Not already enough. there. That was only a loan signing. They've signed on a permanent. Because They've brought him in on a permanent theory. That is correct. I do worry because they only scored 31 goals last season. Enough. And in 15th place, you've already mentioned them, but to survive, and that is AFC Bournemouth. Now that we've had time for new signings and understand what the new manager is capable of and pre-season matches to watch, I think the Cherries will be more than safe. Andoni Iriola took a second division team in La Liga to a Copa del Rey semi-final and Rayo Velacciano to top 10 in La Liga. He's clearly done it in past careers, but I believe in Andoni's project. I believe in the manager. He's got the signings that he wants and Bournemouth are going to change around a lot next year, but I think they're going to be more than safe. And in 14th yes. place, might surprise a Come few on. people, I've gone for Nottingham Forest. Ooh. What about you, Theo? I've also gone for Nottingham Forest. Oh, wow. Completely safe. They finished 16th last year. Why have we both given them two places more. Well, I'll tell you what, they brought in Anthony Alanga from Man United. A lot of United fans wanted to see him stay and get game time. Chris Wood, I know he's 31 years old. If he plays, he's going to get eight to 10 goals. That could be the difference. I don't know, I don't know. I mean, they signed him on a permanent. He did bag a few goals. They looked at the stats. They saw that he got a majority of their goals. They signed him on a permanent. Fair enough. And Ola Aina from Torino, ex-Chelsea Academy. I like him, always bought him on Football Manager and he was a decent squad yeah. player. But the main thing for Steve Cooper, he's not added to the transfer market too much. Much. He's focused on the players that he's got and actually had a pre-season, which is something he didn't have last year because he was signing about 30 different players. These are some really good players that you've mentioned. And if Forrest can have a reasonable season, then next season they could be even higher. So it's looking good, isn't it? And before we talk about 13th place, don't forget to press the like button. Do it. It's going to bring your club some luck. Don't be a mug. You've got two seconds to hit the like. And it's so easy. It's completely free to do. It's going to bring your club luck. 13th for me is Fulham Football Club. What about you, Theo? Do you know what? It's something different. I've gone for West. Ham. But tell me about Fulham, Dad. Why have they fallen off this year? Well, it's an uncertain one because of Mitrovic. It looks like he might be going to Saudi Arabia. And if he does, this could be a relegation fight. Fulham are very stern on not allowing him to go. We'll talk about that a little bit later. The reason I've got West Ham falling off this year is the Europa League distractions. Yes. They've gone one league higher from winning the Conference League and they've lost their best player. Yes, it comes with £105 million of cash, but that is over instalments. They won't spend all of that in one go. And what they're looking at right now is potentially a deal with Ward Prowse, but Sky announced yesterday that that deal is broken down and they're going to look at other targets, which I'm gutted about because that would have been perfect. Now, the thing about Fulham, they've got the oldest squad in the league yeah. here. Now, you look at the squad list, you've got Pereira in there, Paulina. You've got some good players in there. Yes. It's just whether you can keep Mitrovic. And in 12th place, Theo, I've gone for West Ham United, who, of course, lost Declan Rice. Brought in over 100 million euros. What are they going to do with that? We don't quite know yet. There's enough talent in there, isn't there? Jared Bowens and Paqueta, I think he could have a He's good season. He's a great season. player, yeah. There's enough talent in there, but I agree with you, Theo. Mm. They've got this European campaign again, well, and that's difficult. We're being very similar because you've already mentioned Fulham. I'm going to mention them now. You just mentioned West Ham. I've already done that. The reason I've got them one higher place than you, I think they're keeping Mitrovic. They've turned down that offer. They've not come in for a new bid because Fulham are strict and have said he is not for sale. Tosin Adarabayo's had a lot of inquiries, but he's going to stay. And even so, if he was to go, Calvin Bassi for 18 million is 
come in for extra depth at centre back. And I'm excited to see how Fulham do next year, but I don't think they're going to step up and step even higher. The board have done well to keep most of their core. Let's see how they do. And in 11th place, I've yes. gone for Crystal Palace of London. What about you, Theo? I've also gone for Crystal Palace. Okay. Dad, we are bang on each other. I don't know. You've been copying my notes, haven't you? I tell you what, Wilfred Zahar has gone out the door. Does yes. that not worry you, Theo? Before we do, Dad, we're agreeing too much. Get down in the comments. Give us your top four and relegated clubs. Zahar, Theo, does it worry you? He's out the door. He is, but they needed to step on and move on. They need to focus on Eze and Alise being the forefront of that attack. And next year, they're one year older. They're exciting players. They're going to cook, aren't they? They are wonderful players. Odson Edouard. Now, this is a player. I want to see him score 10 to 12 nah, goals. Won't happen. He's got to step up and score goals. I just don't know where the goals come from up front next year. Losing Zaha and then, yeah, as you said, Edouard, Mateta. Are they really the answer? Well, this is the worry, Theo. Despite all these attacking players we're talking about, only 40 goals last season. Currently, I mean, it's very nice of me, but as in Elise, I've got a big ask in them and I think they're going to smash it. I'm going for 11th place. Jefferson Lerma is a great signing from Bournemouth. We know he's Premier League proven. He's Colombian. He's exciting. He is going to get straight into that DM position. And in 10th place, dropping down one position, it's you Brentford got? Football Club. Not again. Theory. I've also got Brentford. Let's look at the last five games of last season because Brentford won four of those, including on the last day of the season, beating Man City. Yes. The problem here, of course, Ivan Tony is out till January the 17th. Will that cause them hurt? Their answer is... Wissa, Kevin Sharder, and Embuemo. Yeah. Three attacking, exciting players. Now, they've gone absolute full-on with Freiburg players. They've got Flecken in, Sharder on a permanent. He's young, attacking, exciting. He's got pace. He's German up and coming. I really, I back him this year. He's my underdog in that Brentford team. They've got a young team. It's only going to get better. I believe in Matthew Benham. I believe in the manager, Thomas Frank. And every time we predict them and they do better. I tell you what, Nathan Collins has come in. He's a good, good young player, isn't he? Young, exciting centre-back. You know, I, they didn't want to sell Max Kilman Wolves. They had an offer from Napoli, but they did let Nathan Collins go, so it's a big win for them. In ninth place, I'm going down to the south coast for Brighton and Hove Albion Football Club. Don't tell me you've done the same. I've done the same. I mean, You're Europa League next year, and we still still think they'll get in the top nine. I mean, the amazing thing is, last season, they were the fourth highest scorers in the league. We used to talk about Brighton struggling for goals. But it's different now, isn't it? McAllister's out the door, maybe Saicedo's next. How are we still backing them? Jao Pedro has come in here. What sort of season is he going to have? And well, he was good at Watford, and all the Watford fans are very worried that he's gone, so I'm excited to see him in the Premier League. Mo Dahoud is that McAllister replacement. James Milner adds depth in midfield. Yeah. So it's a deeper squad as they enter Europa League. Are they going to do well in that competition, do you think? I think they could do all right, I'm Theo. Sure. I mean, you've got the likes of Evan Ferguson, Dennis Undav. You've got a few options up front, haven't you? One player I really want to mention. Now, I didn't even know about him until I watched the pre-season summer series match against Brentford. Simon Andringa. Now, him and Matoma re rotating out on that right flank. They're going to be brilliant. He scored a break against Brentford looked really, really good. He got 20 contributions in 26 starts for USG in Belgium last year. It's more depth than brilliant for De Zerbe. Yeah, but what about the loss of Alexis McAllister, Theo? You've seen him for Big Argentina, hit. for Brighton. There's no denying he's a brilliant player, but I, I also watched Mo Dahoud for Dortmund last year in the Champions League, in the Bundesliga, which they nearly won. He's a regular there, and he was excellent. And in eighth place, dropping yes. down from seventh place, it is Aston Villa, Theo. Tell me you've agreed. I've ag of course I agree. Yeah. They're playing Conference League this year, so it's not as going to be hard as them, but they're going to probably go quite far in that competition because they look very strong. What a squad they have now, Dad. Unai Emery has gone strength to strength. They've got the investment. Been out in the US. They've been shining. What do you think? Well, in terms of the transfer windows here, one of the best. They brought in Moussa Diaby from Bayer Leverkusen, Pau Torres from Villarreal, yeah. and Yuri Tielemans. That is great business. And all three of them are brilliant. Yuri Tielemans, you got on a free from Leicester. Pau Torres was one of the most hyped up players when Villarreal got to that semi-final. Moussa Diaby is one of the quickest footballers I've ever watched yes, live. Yes. He's rapid. And before he became a hype, Everyone was talking about he's going to move to the Premier League, he's going to move, and he's finally done it for a price tag of 50 million euros. Yes, it's a lot of money, but I'm excited. Ollie Watkins, I've always believed in him. I want to see him get 15 goals this season. Yeah, and Diego Carlos, now, it's someone everyone's forgetting about because he had that long-term injury last year, but now he's back to full fitness, played a few games in pre-season. That's added depth, isn't it, Dad? It is, Theo. Now, last season, let's not forget how badly Aston Villa started, and they finished so strongly. So if they can get off to a good start, some yeah. early wins, they could push for the top six. In seventh place, I've gone over to North London for Tottenham Hotspur Football Club, but please tell me you disagree. Well, I've gone for Newcastle. I think Tottenham, it's all about whether they keep Harry Kane. Of course, of course is, he yeah. could go in the next few weeks. I'm assuming that he stays. Bringing in James Madison is brilliant. Getting Kulisevsky on a permanent is great. Is. Great attacking players, but last season, Tottenham Hotspur were defensively inept. What they do have is a new manager in Ange, which did yes. a great job at Celtic, but hard to base it off anything else yeah. than that. Manuel Solomon, brilliant signing. 
Yeah. You loved them at Fulham. Yes, the yes. Israeli lad is highly underrated. Yes. And now he's got a home at Tottenham. I think it's only going to go in one direction. Richarlison is like a new signing because he barely got any game time under the last few coaches. Harry Kane looks like he's staying. He's probably fitting in, looking around in the squad. He's got James Madison next to him now. He's probably thinking, this is a better Spurs squad than last year. Let's just stay and go for it. You're proving my point. You've talked about attacking players. Yeah. That Spurs defence is needs... leaky. It is vulnerable. They need it defensive investment. My seventh place is Newcastle. And the reason I've dropped them down from top four is simply because they've got Champions League football. I've always thought last year that Jacob Murphy was just a squad player for this year, then they'll improve. Well, now that they've sold at St. Maximan, they're really going to need some more wingers or something. They've got good options with Isaac and Callum Wilson up top. But then again, another, another problem for me, centre-backs. Shah or Botman get injured and you've got a Champions League game coming up. Who are you trusting at the centre-back position? They need more defensive options, Dan. Bring Don't in get me wrong. Harvey Barnes, yeah. Theo. They're doing things in an incremental way. They're not splashing the cash all at once. Very, very smart. It's a good point. You've got Barnes, you've got Anthony Gordon, and you've got Almiron. That's three yes. wingers, to be fair. I'd like to see Livermento sign for a bit more fullback depth, but apart from that seventh for now, let's get straight into the sixth. Let's do I've it. gone for Newcastle, and we've just spoken about them. But when I say that, Theo, I think Newcastle can finish top four again. I like the balance of the team. We're going to talk about Liverpool and Man United later. Later. In some ways, their teams, their squads are not balanced. Well, I, I've gone for Tottenham in sixth, and the yeah. reason I've given them one position more, I feel like I've already given all the reasons, but they've got more creativity with, with, with Madison now. I'm excited to see what they can do. I actually like the appointment of Ange. I think for once, they've got it right. Yes, they might be a few hiccups early on, but they will grow as a team. They need a centre-back. That's why I've not got them anywhere near top four for now. This is getting interesting. In fifth place, yes. I've gone for Chelsea Football Club. Have what you? about you, Theo? Missing Champions League, but finishing in Europa League, you've gone for Chelsea. Yes. I've gone for Manchester United. United. Is that a shocking opinion, Dad? It isn't, Theo. Now, I'm going to talk about Man United later, and I think there's things they haven't done that they need to do. But talking about Chelsea, let's not forget last season, they just couldn't score goals. They were one yep. of the lowest scoring teams in the division. They had an absolute shocker. We're now in a situation where they've got the youngest squad in the league, and they've completely shuffled the pack. Goes Kai Havertz, Mason Mount, Matteo Kovacic, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, and Christian Pulisic. Manchester United, Dad. That's the club that will finish fifth, and I'll tell you why. Mason Mount's a good signing, giving him the seven shirt was a bit ridiculous. Eric Ten Hag's got a lot of pressure as well because the Champions League is arriving this year. It's a massive year for Anthony and Jadon Sancho. We need yeah. some big performances. They've got the squad for it, but is it good enough? Is their first 11 good enough for top four? I'm saying no compared to the competition at the moment. A lot of United fans are going to roast me, but I do actually think Andre Onana was a great appointment. I think bringing in Mason Mount was a very good move. I think he's a very good young English player, and he'll yeah. fit with the, the Marcus Rashfords of this world. They know each other. The biggest problem is the Glazers. It's yes. the ownership situation. The fact that the Glazers want to sell, but they're not sure about selling. How is this not done sell yet? Sell the club. They have to... Because the brothers, the family, are not sure what they want That's to do. crazy. They're it's just madness. Well, I think Ten Hag's done a good job moving the captaincy over to Bruno Fernandes. He's a regular. He's the one shouting on the pitch, yeah. telling everyone where to go. It wasn't going to be Maguire anymore. I don't know how much game time Harry's going to get. Fourth place, I've gone for Manchester United. Now, now we you've go. spoken about them. There is some wonderful talent in there. I'm more worried about the centre of the park Theo. Okay. Bruno's been brilliant for a few years but he's getting older. So overall, I think United will sneak into fourth place. I think last season they overachieved. We've not spoken about Liverpool yet. Both of us giving them pretty high positions. We'll get onto that soon. Now it's my time to confess. My fourth place, Champions League spot, and I think fans will be very happy with this, Chelsea Football Club. Yes. They've got a complete squad rebrand. It's almost guesswork to see where they're going to finish. And I know Nico Jackson has looked amazing. His link up with Mudrick has been incredible. Is it going to work every week in the Premier League when every team is playing to the top of their game? I'm not too sure. But most of all, I'm super excited about Christopher Nkunku. Yes. 20 contributions in 20 starts for RB Leipzig last year. I think he's ready for the Premier League. He's prolific. It's exactly what they needed. Remember the name, 19-year-old Brazilian Andre Santos. He's excited me in the preseason matches. And if Chelsea really want to risk it all, play him as a regular. Stick him next to Enzo Fernandez and let that duo cook. Christopher Nkunku, Theo, 90 contributions in 119 Bundesliga games. Yeah. It's goals, it's assists. Don't forget that. It's not just a tap-in merchant. Exactly. And the main reason I've given Chelsea Champions League football and gone against the bookies is because they've got no other distractions. Third place, down to the big names. Whoever you mention here is not going to win the league. Who have you picked? Liverpool Football Ooh. Club, Theo, who have brought in Sobos Ley and they've yes. brought in Alexis McAllister. But that's and it. And they've got rid of their entire central midfield. Yeah, they've got no more ball-winning midfielder. They've got no more DM. Yes. Who's going to play that six? I don't know. I think they need to shuffle the pack a little bit. So, for example, bringing Trent into the midfield yeah. could be a Jürgen good Jurgen Klopp is keeping us guessing, isn't he? Yes. Is he going to throw Trent in the midfield? Is he going to go with the youth? Bobby Clark's been playing in a lot of preseason games, which I, I, I like the look of. He's a good player and he's only going to grow under 
of the best mentoring at Liverpool. We've seen that with many other players. But you look up front, Theo, yeah. and Liverpool have got a world-class attacking midfield and forward options. Well, let's be honest, Sobosle, where does he go? On the wing, into the midfield. In the pre-season, he's been played in a midfield three. A super creative player. Now, we can't forget, Austrian Bundesliga is where he made it, RB Salzburg. 1920 season, that's when Arsenal were knocking on the door every single day. He got 19 contributions, including 10 assists of them, in 18 starts. Every time he puts on a shirt, he becomes the main man. He's got an absolute thunderbolt strike on him. He can create, he can do it all. I'm very excited. Most Salah next year as well. Yeah. Now, you gotta remember, a lot of these key players have stayed. They didn't have that same problem where they played a Champions League final really late and they had all those problems, lost the final, got to their head. No, they've got Europa League, which they'll probably win. Yes, They're gonna yes. win Europa, let's be real. I expect Liverpool to be third or fourth, but I do not expect them to be first or second. I really think they've fallen behind Man City in the last two or One three years. One more question. Nunes, is he breaking something like 20 goals next year? No, he's not. Why? He, not 20 goals. He's got a goals, better Theo. creative team around him. Are you really underestimating the Uruguayan big number nine? I think he's a good player. I like Cody Gampo. I like Luis Diaz. You've got, you've yes, got Luis Diego Diaz. Jota in there. Diaz is, you know, his injury last year. Now he's fully back. This squad is stacked. No wonder we both agree on third place. Who is your Premier League champion 23-24? Well, this is going to surprise you, Theo, because the team that's going to win the league this season is the second most expensive squad in the league. What? The second most expensive. So you've gone with Arsenal to win the league? Manchester City to win. No! I didn't even know that. That's a crazy fact. But, but, but uh, Arsenal so much information. Squad theory. Arsenal are going to finish second comfortably. Wait. Their squad is worth more than Man City's now that they brought in the likes of Declan Rice. Why are you backing Manchester City to win the Premier League? They've got rid of their captain Gundogan. They've still got Erling Haaland. They've still got Kevin De Bruyne. They've still got enormous talent in all areas. This too. is the year the Gunners are going to cook. They have North London at the ready. It's already red, we know that. But now it's the time to make it one step further and grab that Premier League trophy, bring it back to something they could only do with Thierry Henry. Well, now they've got the best Englishman talent up and coming in the world. They've broken the Premier League record. They've signed Kai Havertz. They are going to finish second because Manchester City are too good, they're gonna win it again. I know they've lost Gundo and they're replacing with Kovacic and Kovacic isn't as good, but what City have is a very strong squad and the best manager in maybe football heritage, yeah. in football history. It's good squad depth, they've got Gvardiol, that's the big question. Yeah. Fabrizio has stuck to his guns and said, I know I hear we go to it a couple weeks ago, I still think it's gonna be done. Now today, there is a private jet that's going from Leipzig to Manchester yeah. and there's a lot of rumors that Guardiol is doing his medical very soon. I think this deal's gonna be done and based off the fact they made big signings, they've got Haaland who's gonna cook this year, yeah. he's gonna win the Ballon d'Or, isn't he? I think this is Man City's time to shine again and win the league. But Dan, Arsenal, second place, great new signings though. Timber, Rice, of course, we can't forget Havertz. How's, it, how, how's Havertz going to do? You cannot criticise the Arsenal board of directors, the owners. They, they are throwing money at this team, yeah. but they're doing it in a very sensible way. So no complaints about what Arsenal are doing. They've had a better transfer window so far. Let's not forget, for most of last season, yeah. they were top, and they just ran out of steam so late on. They've got better. They've only strengthened. Why are they not going to win the league? Why are we both saying this? Are we mugs? Is it going to go down to the wire? That's the question. The difference is, Theo, Gabriel Jesus against Erling Haaland. Erling Haaland oh, will score 30 plus goals. But the goals. backup, the backup for Jesus is in Ketia. And right now, Balogun. Balogun's not even gone, and he's one of the most exciting European talents. He's got Inter and AC sniffing him up. Havertz, how's he gonna come in? What is Kai Havertz's role at Arsenal next year? I don't know. This was the one Theo that I didn't really understand. I think he's he's a good player. I think he showed that at Chelsea, but he's not a great player. If Arsenal win the league and prove us wrong, I'll put my hands in the air and say, fair play. I really did expect it to be close. But right now, you cannot go against Pep. You cannot go against Haaland. Carl Walker has not gone. There was a big rumor he was off. Maybe it's not as expensive as Arsenal, but they've got the experience and the heritage and the history of winning the Premier League. We'd not even mentioned Phil Foden and Jack Grealish. They, they can have some, a great year. They can, and Jack Grealish, he's got to get more than 10 goals and more than 10 assists. That mm. is his personal target. So comment down below, who is winning the Premier League? Are you going for Arsenal? Give us a reason why. Give us reasons that we haven't discussed yet in the video. Don't forget the relegation battle and don't forget to join our FPL league. It's on the screen now. Fog Dad's getting involved. I'm getting involved. Massive giveaways. Get down there. Let's all compete. An FPL video coming soon. And remember, good luck to your team. And if you like this video, it'll bring you that good luck.